And today we're gonna to wrap up our four part series on security plus test preparation. I'm Rob, an educator and founder of itmasterkey.com and my goal is to make sure that everybody that watches this video gets certified. In this test prep, we're gonna actually go through each question, we're gonna deliberate about what the answer is, then I'm gonna tell you what the answer is and tell you why that's the answer. Let's not waste any more time, let's get straight into it. You are the supervisor for 100 employees for a downtown security firm. All employees have the privilege of downloading applications to assist in performing their job functions. A security engineer has installed a method to ensure no modifications to the application have occurred. What has an engineer installed as a method to provide validation? So most likely the engineer has implemented code signing so with code signing, let's back up a little bit. So code is pretty much what everything runs on, whether it's a Python language, whether it's JavaScript, whatever it is, that's the code. So every website, YouTube, everything is built on code. So you don't have to be a coder to understand that. Just know that any web page, Google, YouTube, ESPN, itmasterkey.com, all of those sites run on code so with code signing code signing says hey man i made these changes i did this stuff and i'm gonna sign it and i'm gonna take responsibility for it so if something weird happens if something goes on you know that that person is the one that changed the code that person is the person that put that code in that person is the one that broke every damn thing as a security engineer you have a myriad of ways to check online status of certificates some may introduce privacy concerns you want to implement a method that will hide the origin of the certificate status request. Which of the following should you implement? Okay gang, so some more acronyms. If you've been following this series, you already know that acronyms are your nemesis, right? They're gonna uh, creep up on you, they're gonna make you nervous, they're gonna make you sweat, they're gonna make you second guess yourself, especially if you don't know what the hell they stand for, right? So, O C S P online certification status protocol. So, it allows you to see the status of digital certificates have they been revoked? Who are they from? Should I trust them? So on and so forth. So, O C S P stapling is what would allow you to do that, just to make sure that the status of the certifications was good to go, and it wouldn't actually show who was requesting. It wouldn't show where the request actually came from. It would just show you, okay, if the certificate is okay, or if it's no bueno. Next up, a major e-commerce site has recently suffered a highly publicized data breach. The company's public relations team has been under extreme pressure since the breach occurred. What are some of the potential effects on the company due to the breach? Choose all that apply. So this one is pretty straightforward. So customers are pretty much gonna be like, oh, that's a wrap. We can't mess with them anymore, right? Um, they made our data available to uh, hackers or to people that I want to have access to it um, and another thing may be fines especially depending on uh, what industry you're in if you're in healthcare it's definitely gonna be uh, a problem or even if you're in a small mom-and-pop if they can trace the data breach back to your company and somebody's identity got stolen a credit score got uh, ripped up or somebody ran up a bunch of charges on their credit card so on and so forth that can have uh, fines as far as legally, and you can also get sued personally, right? So um, that's some stuff that would um, apply to this situation. So uh, going directly to the test, when you're inside the test, right? If it says choose all that apply, do me a favor and choose all that apply, man. All right, so it's not. it may not say choose three, it most likely it's not. It's not gonna say choose two. If it's five options, choose the two that apply, or the three that apply, or the four that apply, right? Just make sure 
that when it says choose all that apply, that you look not too quick on the draw and that you only click in one. All right, gang, before we get into the next question, do me a favor. This stuff is free. Only payment I need is one like and a subscription. That's it. That's all. Here's a word from our sponsors. Hey, don't gamble with your future. Come to Master IT. All right. So Jamal is a network engineer for a telecommunications company based out of Michigan. This company has seen a spike on the workload put on the network. Jamal wants to balance the workload placed on each server. He decides to place a load balancing server on the network. What part of the company's infrastructure would this refer to? So this would most closely resemble scalability. So scalability means that you add some devices, you add some more stuff to accommodate the increasing workload, right? Now, don't get this uh, confused with business. When we're talking about business, scale just means that, hey, I got one uh, crack house, I wanna have five crack houses. I'm not saying that, you know, selling drugs is, anyway, that, that took a weird left, that took a weird turn. Anyway, scalability, right? <laughs> means that uh, you can put devices on your um, network or in your organization that's gonna help with the growth, right? So uh, we had a workload of only 10 users, but we start moving and shaking and really doing really good. Now we got 100 users. You gotta make sure that you have those devices in there that is gonna be able to handle the scale of the workload, okay? All right, gang, last question. You're performing a penetration test on a legacy accounting app for Apple-based phones. The application uses both SSL and TLS certificates. Your penetration test shows the application is extremely susceptible to MITM attacks. How can you prevent this from happening on the public internet connection? Okay, gang, so this had several different acronyms, right? Several different acronyms. So one of the main ones we want to look at is MITM. What does that stand for? MITM stands for man in the middle. So a man in the middle attack literally means that uh, a service, a protocol, software, something stands in between you and a server or you and somebody else and actually looks at, steals, copies, transforms the information that you're trying to send, right? So certificate pinning would actually uh, stop that. So certificate pinning just ensures that everything is good, everything is okay, and that the person requesting the certificate is the person that's supposed to have the certificate and that is valid across the board, okay? So gang, this is the last uh, video um, of this series. It's not gonna be the last video on this channel. Uh, so make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, um, if you need uh, more help, uh, if you like my teaching style, you can head over to itmagicky.com um, and enroll inside of a full course right now. We have a super duper bundle uh, that, um, how many courses are in there? It's seven courses in there uh, for seven certifications. You can head over there, get A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus, a bunch of Microsoft certifications and a project management. The project management certification, we're probably gonna take that out of there because it was just, we just, I'm just giving you too much. But anyway, um, hopefully you enjoyed the series. Uh, make sure that you drop in the comments uh, where you're from, what certification that you're going after, and one piece of advice that could help somebody else that's going through this journey. Other than that, I'll see you in class.